as a game, Final Fantasy VII Remake was incredibly well received. However, some of its changes have created both anxiety and excitement among the fanbase. Nothing more so than the arbiters of fate and the consequences that they may have had. This all culminates in what is undoubtedly the most controversial chapter in the entire game. Chapter 18. Loved by many for promising some new twists, and hated by quite a few as well for just being, well I think I've elaborated on that enough times. The big question has been, how far of a deviation are we talking? Well, it's really been hard to gauge because on one hand, you'll have a developer saying that things are going to remain pretty much the same. And then on the other hand, you'll have someone saying quite the opposite. Well, today we have one of the game's co-directors, Motomu Toriyama, yet again suggesting that you can expect some sort of story changes coming with Rebirth. So please hit that subscribe button. We are almost to 90k and I'd love it if you could push us over the edge. Sitting down with the Square Enix blog, Motomu Toriyama was asked questions about the game. At the end of the interview, he was asked, quote, Thank you for sharing your memories and thoughts of working on Final Fantasy VII Remake. Is there anything you'd like to say to fans who have been reading this whole blog series? With him replying, As it says at the end of the game, the unknown journey will continue, and Cloud and his friends will be on that journey for a while yet. From here on in, the Whispers cannot act to me maintain the destined timeline, so fans can look forward to seeing what kind of future awaits the team. Again, with the Whispers trying to protect the original game's timeline, and that timeline being something that is no longer protectable, something that is absolutely not guaranteed anymore. Hence the end tag, the unknown journey will continue. It spells out that the macro of Rebirth story will be quite different than many imagine. Note that he says that the Whispers cannot act to maintain the destined timeline Line, not that they no longer exist. Now that could mean that they completely and utterly no longer exist, or it could just mean that they no longer have the power to act to maintain the Destin timeline. In that light, it's sort of left really ambiguous and could probably go either way. The consequences of the game's ending, I feel like, are far too big to ignore. Defeating Destiny Incarnate, resurrecting Zack, changing Stamp from a terrier to a beagle, which is gonna be important somehow. These are things that you can't just open up and then back down from. I see a lot of people treat these as simple deviations that are there as a fun surprise for veteran fans, but there is just absolutely no way that these things can be that. These are major fundamental changes to the story, and when you change something this deep in a story, you do two things. One, you fundamentally change the entire flow of that story, and two, thematically, things are probably going to be a lot different than what they were before. And I'm not saying that these things are objectively good or bad. I'm just saying that I think people should come to terms with that, and they should probably do so sooner rather than later. Or should they? I mean, we have interviews from just a few months back with Nomura and Kitase saying that the game will still just be Final Fantasy VII, and don't expect any massive deviation. But then also, even in those interviews, there was still a lot of indication of the story deviating, because they felt like they needed to do that in order to keep the game interesting. A lot of the takes that I see regarding this mostly believe that the game is only going to change the details leading into the broader strokes, and that for the most part the bigger picture will remain the same. That is to say that we'll still hit the same destination, but how we'll get there will be fundamentally different. Though I would find that a little disappointing. All of these new elements, all of these things that people have theorized about, all of this excitement that they generated about this brand new story that a lot of people are genuinely very much into. Pulling the rug out from under that and letting everything be the exact same kills any type of excitement for me. Contrary to the old saying, I think it's about the journey and the destination, especially when it comes to telling a great story. I think it's fairly obvious that the story is going to be making some pretty big changes here. The plot thread with Zack alone is already a massive enough deviation that there is no way the story can still go the same. And if you ask me, when they say that Final Fantasy VII will remain the same, it's kind of an expectation setting. That is to say that they're setting up for even more subversion in the future. The general consensus is that Rebirth will be like Part 1 story, where 80%-ish of the game was mostly faithful. There may be some deviations along the way, and then the ending will take a radical left turn. But I, on the other hand, think to the contrary of that. I think that the new things are going to be so 
interwoven into the plot that it probably won't even be a percentage-wise things have changed. It'll just continue to be a slow divergence. The Evangelion films are probably a great comparison, where the first Ava rebuild is really faithful. And then as we get into the films, there is no way to discuss any percentage of divergence. Eventually, it's just a different thing altogether. So I think in terms of dividing this up on how similar it'll be and how much the same it'll be is almost useless. I think Rebirth will have many familiar parts to it such as Cosmo Canyon and the Naki's backstory, as well as the backstories of all of the characters. But aside from that, I think that, well, the unknown journey will continue. Shout out to patron Craig Riley and the rest of the Ultima community. 